we're farm born we grow a lot of the ingredients here on the farm and we try and use as much as we can from the farm to create biodiversity and we believe that real tastes better so that's what the brand's all about and i'm looking forward to answering 26 questions <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Tom Warner and uh, I'm here uh, to answer 26 questions for World Gin Day. Uh, I founded the Warner's Distillery on my family farm eight years, uh, six months and seven days ago. So we are, we are sort of one of the oldest craft gin distillers in the, in the world now with the amount that have opened. Favourite food? To, I, I enjoy all food, which is why I'm carrying about 10 kilos too much at the moment. But I think for me, I prefer, you know, growing up in the UK and on a farm, a roast dinner. And I think roast beef has to be the number one, closely followed by roast pork. But they would be my, uh, my favourite meals. Perfect day for me is get up, uh, walk the dogs. Got two quite big dogs, so I need to walk them in the morning. Um, come back, do a workout, um, but do this over. So, so we're not running at this, so it's a nice pace. Relax, do the workout. Have uh, maybe avocados on toast with poached eggs and some bacon. So a nice late brunch. Uh, maybe uh, read the newspaper for a bit. Sort of relax. And then go and see some friends and start drinking early. That's probably, you know, spending time with friends and having a good time would be the, the great end to that day. My most treasured possession uh, is probably actually, I've only got a few pictures of me as an adult with my mum and she passed away in 2014. So I think those pictures of me and mum are, are really important to me. So I think um, that would be my most treasured possession. If I was immortal, um, I, I think if you're immortal, you've got a responsibility because you're almost godlike, aren't you? So you need to act like a god in a way and try and fix the world's problems. It might take you a while as one person, but over time, you should be able to build up the network and resource to sort of sort all the world's problems and get rid of famine, war and pollution. And once you've done that, probably then work out how to become unimmortal because your mental health watching all your friends die over and over again would be quite horrific so that's probably what i would do uh i think a common thing about me i'm quite a i'm a bigish guy i'm you know six two and i'm like 240 kilos and i've got a big personality i think people can think i'm quite big and brash and actually i'm uh, i'm a real feeling person uh, and, and I'm a, like a super sensor on people's emotions and I like to make everyone happy. So I think people can think that I'm a bit of a blunt trauma instrument and actually I'm quite nuanced as a person. So that's probably what the, is the biggest misunderstanding. It's got to be coffee. I, uh, I, I just, I know I'm English and we're, we're meant to be the nation of tea drinkers. But I, I love coffee and I worked in the coffee industry in East Africa in my early 20s. So it's coffee all the way. I think I just I, I want to be remembered as a, a nice guy, but not a pushover. Um, as someone that, that did good, lived fully, loved passionately uh, and, and tried to make a difference to the world. got to be dog we've got two we've got two newfoundland crossed with a poodle dog so they're both 40 kilos so we've got 80 kilos of big hairy dog to look after you can't trust cats bucket list for this year i think getting out of the county because we've been locked down for so long um and uh, eating some nice food and getting to some cocktail bars and having some nice drinks because we just, it's simple things that we used to take for granted, but getting out into hospitality and having a good time, that's uh, as much as possible. That's uh, on my bucket list. Oh, probably stirred because I'd like to, you know, I like to think I'm more sophisticated than I am. So I do love a martini. So I like to start with a stirred martini at the start of the evening. And I always seem to end up on Negronis, which is a really stupid thing to do late on, I always think. But it always seems to happen. 
Something I've always dreamed of doing. Um, I think, oh, that's a difficult one. Probably learning more languages. I think I dream about, you know, I always think it's a great idea to be able to talk in, in different languages and I've just never got around to doing it. So learning more languages. It's got to be something to do with personality. You know, I love dealing with people. and I, I, I did sales for a decade. Um, I've worked in the produce industry, working with farmers all around the world. Um, and I, I think maybe it would be nice to do raising money for charity, using my social skills maybe to, 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 to pull money out of high net worth individuals and get it into the hands of people that need it. The bit, I've tried not to, I thought about this and, you know, probably the first award you win is, is huge. But for me, uh, for a simple country boy, you know, I grew up on a farm. I got inducted in 2019 into the Worshipful Company of Distillers, which is, you know, in, it's a livery company. And I got my freedom to the city of London because of the business I started on my family farm in, in rural England. And that's a bit of a mind blow for me, you know, and very few people actually get that accolade in their life. So I think that's a massive, a massive boon for me to have achieved that, that. And I still don't really know what it means. Apparently I can carry a sword through London and, and herd sheep over London Bridge or something. But all these things are completely uh, useless in the modern world. Um, but it, it's a really awesome achievement. Um, oh, mum and dad, you know, you grow up on a farm. My mum was a home economics teacher. My dad was a farmer. And mum was also a farmer on the side of her full-time job as a teacher. So that work ethic uh, and, and lifestyle of, of just get it done, uh, huge mentors for me. Another one that sounds corny, but Arnold Schwarzenegger's six, six uh, reasons for success or six uh, rules for success. I think, listen to those, I think you can apply them in nearly every single situation. And the biggest one for me with Arnie's six rules for success is never mind the naysayers. There are so many people in the world, he says it differently to me, obviously, never mind the naysayers. But there are lots of people in the world that will tell you you can't achieve certain things. Um, and, you know, that's, that's rubbish. We can all just get after it. And if you think you can, you can. So, um, Arnie... Simon Sinek, in terms of business, I think he's got some awesome views. Why? You know, what people buy off you for the why, not the what. So really get people to understand the why of your business. Brené Brown, that woman, I'm still learning, but she's so good at... Men have big egos and we wear a lot of armour. We wear this big protective shield and understanding that actually it's bloody stupid and most of the world's problems are caused by it. So learning to remove that armor and be vulnerable. Uh, I think that's that's really important. And a recent one that I've added to my list of inspirational people or mentors um, is Sir Tim Smith, who did the Eden Project in Cornwall. If you listen, he was on a podcast I listened to the other day, but that guy's just awesome. He had a rock and roll career. Now he's like this eco warrior and he lost it all in the middle. And he's just such an inspirational guy to listen to. So. Uh, Definitely uh, listening to, to Tim if you get the opportunity. Uh, perpetual optimism is a force multiplier. Uh, I think time off, it's similar to perfect day in respect of, of, you know, walking the dogs, relaxation, running your own business is intense. Um, so I think as much as I love social, I also, if I do get some time off, just a bit of downtime is good. Uh, sort of repair your mind. Um, I, I mean, I sound like I'm some guru. I don't do this very often, so it, I, this is aspirational. Um, but spending time with friends, there is nothing more soul enriching for me than spending time with your friends, uh, uh, having a drink, sharing stories and laughing. That repairs so much in the, in the human body, I think. Um, uh, hopefully still making lots of really tasty booze uh, and, and, and other drinks, but also in, in a more uh, um, probably balanced existence. I think our work-life balance is a bit skewed to work at the moment, and it's been very skewed to work, so I'm just pulling that back. Um, and probably 
giving back a bit more, enabling myself to, to sort of give back and get involved in uh, charitable organisations or, or helping people out. Because again, I think that is the part of, of human nature that we don't do enough of. But when you do it, my God, it makes you feel so amazing, better than any bonus or, or cash that you can earn. It's that helping other humans can really make you feel better. Favourite um, favorite books? I, li- I like sort of fantasy fiction. I'm quite a, uh, an adventurer, a dreamer. So anything by Raymond E. Feist or Patrick Rutherford works for me. Um, those That style of, of, of sort of medieval wizardry fantasy adventure stuff. Um, and favourite show uh, on the TV? We've been loving um, Billions. Uh, and uh, uh, Succession. They're, they're two obsessions. My wife and I have just obsessively watched those over sort of the last 12 months where we've all had a bit more time on our hands. Country, because I'm a country boy, but you need the city for a good time. You need those great bars and those fantastic restaurants and they're a necessity, but it's it's got to be country at heart. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll from ACDC. Um, what truly makes me happy? I, I think making people smile. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a natural sort of entertainer. Um, it's just my personality type. I'm gregarious. I enjoy um, people. So spending time with friends, making them laugh, being with my wife, making her laugh, um, you know, they're, they're, that's the times that I enjoy the most. I'd always wanted to start a business, even at 20, but I, I didn't do it then. And I think the younger you are, you know, you're a time millionaire. These guys that are at school now, um, you know, they all want to be older, but the reality is, don't chill out. You've got the time, but also you don't have to go and get a job. Go and go and change the world. Come up with your own thing. Um, I've got to say the farm, because you know, it's, it's where I spent most most of my childhood, formative years, climbing in trees, you know, being in rivers and, and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, growing up on a farm is like Enid Blyton meets slavery. You know, you are. It's this uh, five five go fishing sort of. Uh, a lifestyle but also you're working from the day that you're born so it's sort of a mixed emotions place but the, the family farm is just such an awesome place that last night the sunset every day is different and it's just incredible so i've got my bag next to me here in there i've got too many notepads i'm just an idiot at taking notes and i always have about three or four notebooks on the go at the same time and I'd love to get better at taking notes, but laptop, notepad, chargers. Um, I've got a, 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 a Leatherman knife that's got lots of different tools in it if I need to try and fix something on the farm and I haven't got anything else with me. So that's the kind of stuff. Favorite project, I think, in, in my distilling career has been building the stills. You know, that, that's, it's probably the most exciting thing you can do is when your still arrives and you get more in the stills we bought. They're fantastic stills, Arnold Holstein stills from Germany. But you get more instructions with IKEA furniture. So putting them together and working that out, this massive, it was like Christmas Day as a five-year-old with this huge Meccano set. It's just an amazing, I've, I've built four now stills and every time you, you approach it with just this infantile glee uh, of, of building this machine and it's it's just awesome i think it's got to be the lemon balm smash which is a, a twist on a basil smash which you know jörg meyer is famous for creating in hamburg but it's it's using fresh lemon balm from the farm which is a herb that my mum grew in her botanical garden. We've made a gin that's dominant in lemon balm uh, flavour as well. But a lemon balm, London dry gin, you know, uh, you can double. Um, I think it's a 50, 50 mils um, is sort of the minimum. You can go up to about a 70 mil measure into there with um, between 15 or 25 mils of sugar syrup, depending on how sweet you like it. And then just a load of fresh 
lemon balm, muddle it in the uh, cocktail shaker, add the ice, give it a shake, double strain into a coupette glass. A just insanely delicious cocktail. Thanks, Tiff. Happy World Gin Day to everyone, and thank you for having me.